Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Tracker Man 44. Hey, I'm over at my much older brother's house this morning. He'll be the pretty one to walk around in the background every so often. But uh, at any rate, he come across a deal where uh, one of our, our lady cousins uh, gave him a, a blower or a fan that no longer worked. And so uh, before he threw it in the trash, he asked me to stop by and take a look at it. So uh, first thing you want to do, it's got a capacitor on it. So the first thing you always want to do is check the capacitor. If you take a quick look at it right here, you can see. Maybe you can see up close. I don't know. But anyway, it's got swelled up. I didn't even put the tester on it. Because if it's swelled up, that means that, that the capacitor itself is bad. This is supposed to be a perfectly flat spot on the top of the capacitor. So I went ahead, grabbed a 6 microfarad capacitor off truck, and I just went ahead and replaced it before we ever start troubleshooting to see if the motor is good or bad. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and plug it into an extension card. We're going to see you know, what happens whenever we turn it on. So it may or may not make sparks fly, but we'll find out. Taking a quick look at it, you can see it's, it's a nice fan. It's made for a pedestal. So you'll have to come up with something if we manage to make it run. But it's a Dayton. Quarter horsepower, 110 volt, two speed, 1075 two speed. So first thing we want to do, and I've already taken the screws out of this, is pull the switch cover off. So now we're going to go ahead and plug it in. But I want to insulate this switch to make sure it doesn't uh, definitely doesn't make any sparks. Like I say, we don't want any surprises. So with that in the off position, we hope. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. Oh hey, this is a video for entertainment only. You guys know automatically not to do the things I do. Especially uh, not in the manner in which I do them. But at any rate, with that there, if you can look down inside and trace out, you can probably see the black wire coming off of the extension card right up to what the center position of that switch. So we have to assume that black wire is going to be common. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the jumper on the black and just touch it momentarily. Okay, you can see it wants to turn. So we have normal operation on that speed. And the black is going to be common to the two speeds, so I just touched the other one. You can tell obvious speed difference. That's obviously low speed, and this is obviously high speed. But when you turn the switch, nothing happens whenever you flip the switch. So we know the switch is bad. So we're going to go out about the business of changing that to a toggle switch and put a little box on the back. I doubt that we'll be able to even find this exact switch without costing an arm and leg. And you know, we like to do things on the cheap. So I'm just going to replace this with a toggle switch and to put a 2x4 handy box on the back of the motor. So we're going to go ahead and pop these uh, wires off of the back of this. By the way, it is unplugged. Got to be gentle on them wires. If you jerk too hard, you're going to pull them right out of the winding in there. So now we got to come up with a crimp connector to extend these out. I got a slightly heavier gauge wire than the originals. They were going to put that thing off with Laurie's trash man. Mm -hmm. I said, no, do that. I said, I'll take it. I put my, my junk pile. Mm -hmm. That's how I check it first. Man, always check it before you throw it away. Oh, yeah. Okay, we got our three extensions on there. Well, it fell down in there, but we got our three extensions, so we're going to extend the wires real quick. I have three colors, they ain't the right ones, but I got three colors. Want a squeeze connector? If you got one, yeah. Oh, I got, yeah, I got yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, just hang on. Oops, I didn't break it off. So he's drilled this to where it'll mount on the uh, the cover plate where the wiring diagram normally is, but there's no wiring diagram on this one here. It's been gone for a long time. But he drilled the cover plate so we can actually screw it with the cover blade bolts right to it. We'll allow the power wire to come in right underneath the box. We're going to go ahead and insert the extensions right up through the center, but we're going to put a little squeezy or squeeze connector right in the middle to protect those wires from chafing with vibration. Whenever it sits there and chafes, rubs back and forth with vibration, it'll eventually bore through the insulation and, and shard out. So what we did, we went ahead and uh, got the extensions on there and I used some of the uh, amalgamating tape, you know that rubber tape when you stretch it, it kind of chemically uh, bonds to itself. So we put that on there and that's going to become the strain relief. We're going to put the uh, half inch squeeze connector there. 
tighten the squeeze connector down. I'm putting it in upside down because the toggle switch is going to protrude down inside the box. And I don't want the toggle switch to come in contact with the top of the squeeze connector. This is mainly, mainly just to prevent any chafing of the wires in the future. That should drop down in there just like that. This should slide over the top. If I can find the nut. I tell you another way, another way to do a two-speed blower, if you come across one that needs a little bit of a needs a switch or something on it, is you can take two electric switches, a regular light switch like you turn on when you go into the kitchen, and you can use that to switch the power on and off. And then you can take a second one, but the second one needs to be a three-way switch, because a three-way switch has a common in the middle, and then it has Two, uh, two connections, whenever you flip the switch one way or the other, it will make one wire hot or the other wire hot. So whenever you turn the power on, you got power to the circuit. When you flip the switch one way, it's going to be on low speed. Flip the three-way switch the other way, and it'll be on high speed. Now what i got to do is get the holes to line up here. And they're closed, so it's going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and put, put the switch on. I had to come up with some little circular connections. I need smaller ones than these guys here. What I've got here, it happened to be the only thing I had on the shelf, it's a double pull, double throw. So in other words, there's two sets of switches that do exactly the same thing. The center position on this is off. This way is on for these wires here, or these terminals here, and this way is on for those terminals there. And it does it on the front and on both sides of the switch. So the cool thing about this is if it accidentally burns out in the near in the future, all he's got to do is take the wires off of one side and use it on the other side, and you'll get two times life expectancy out of it. I'm going to put the common one, black wire, on the uh, the common terminal here. I'm just going to get them started. It would be nice if I'd had 90 degree connectors, but we'll just bend these. Just put a little bit of a bend on these guys here. So it'll fit right down in there without shorting anything out. Okay, now I'm going to do a little bit of a teaser for uh, Butler Outdoors, up my friend up in Ontario that sent me that Tractor Man 44 plaque. He's always on me to dig out some of these old saws, and I'm over at my much older brother's house, and because it's really difficult to get out these small saws, I'm going to go ahead and tease him a little bit. How would you like to see the original manual that came with the saws back in the 1940s? The original mall manuals here, covering everything you want to know about that mall saw. This ain't the only piece of information we've got on it. So Andrew, if you happen to be paying attention, it, it's coming down the pipe. We'll get there sooner or later. So while we were doing that, the much older brother went ahead and put a uh, put us a hole in this guy here. So we're going to go ahead and put this guy right there. Oh shoot, we got to come up with the right size nut. I'm going to use that for a bushing on the bottom, uh, or a washer. I got a bunch. You, you got a bunch of them? Yeah. All right. Got to go down the house in the basement? Oh, they're down the basement. Well, I can use this for a, a bushing. And just put that on the bottom. That'll hold it back a little bit. See mm -hmm. what I mean? And we'll put this one here just a little bit. It walked off center on us a little bit. Now, we should be able to plug it in. And if sparks don't fly, it should run and do what it's supposed to do. We'll find out if anything's touching here too when we plug this in. No sparks. So here it is. Got the switch on there. There's low speed, I guess, and there's high speed. Very nominal difference in uh, RPM, so I don't think it's going to matter one way or another. So there we have it, just a quick and simple little uh, little repair job. And he rescued something from the trash hopper. You know, it was normally going to just be thrown in a landfill or, you know, or, or going to uh, to the recycle. You know, get a few pennies out of it. But I think this is going to serve him out here in the shed this summer quite nicely. You know, you get out here get to welding, you need to blow them fumes out of the way. You know, and it gets to sweat a little bit in here too. You know, that temperature comes up. So uh, keep that wind blowing across you, you know what I mean? This Tractor Man 44, and I'm out of here, guys.